Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and today we're going to take a little Raspberry Pi Pico and we're going to turn it into a bad USB device. Uh, because, you know, I think it's kind of hard to get your hands on a Flipper Zero. Uh, and this is one way that you can play with one of the features of the Flipper Zero for incredibly cheap. I mean, these Pi Picos go for something like five to eight dollars, uh, depending on which one you get. And they're fun. You can use them for a ton of different stuff. So if you get bored of this, you can reflash it with something else and play with something different and do a whole other different project with them. They're really fun little uh, intriguing microcontrollers. So, you know, thanks to uh, DBISU, uh, the uh, maintainer of this repository and all the contributors uh, for creating this. And uh, let's walk through it. So the first step is to clone our repository. If you watched my last video, you know that git clone is the powerful command we're going to use. Uh, I always recommend typing these things in yourself unless you absolutely trust uh, the place that you're getting a command from. So I'm going to go to git clone and I'm just going to copy that in. Okay, cool. Well, I guess I forgot to delete this one last time, but here we go. Now I have my Pico Ducky repository. We're all set here. So I'm going to go back down now uh, and we're going to follow the next step, uh, which is going to be to flash our device with Circuit Python. Now, one of the cool things about the Raspberry Pi Picos is that they're incredibly easy to flash. All you need is a .uf2 file. Uh, and then a quick reboot of your device. So we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna get CircuitPython 7.3.3. I'm gonna download that. I'm actually just gonna save it in that same Pico Ducky GitHub repository folder. We're gonna go and we're gonna take our Raspberry Pi Pico. There's like one button on this device, a little white oval. We're gonna hold that down and we're gonna plug it into our computer and let go. That's gonna bring up this, our device as RPI RP2. Uh, and this is kind of the flash mode. In this mode, you can drag and drop any .uf2 file and then it's gonna flash our device. But I think it only accepts .uf2 files in this mode. Uh, so I have this, this is the add a fruit circuit python .uf2. We're just gonna take that and drag it over here. We're gonna drop it and now it's gonna take over uh, and it's actually going to reboot, uh, flash and reboot our Pico. And it's gonna come back and it's gonna call itself Circuit Pi. Here we go. So we have Circuit Pi. Uh, this is our device. Uh, th this won't be here. I don't know why I inadvertently dragged and dropped to the wrong place. Uh, but everything else would be there. We should be all set to go. And so now we have to install our uh, libraries, the libraries we're gonna need to, to make this device uh, do what we want it to do. To do that, we have to download one of these bundles. We're gonna go for the 7X because we downloaded 7.3.3. And again, I'm just gonna download that right into the Pico Ducky folder. Now, I don't know why my computer is having some trouble here with unzipping. Uh, so we're going to go, we're just going to hit extract here. Yeah, it keeps giving me an empty library folder. I've yet to figure out why this happens, but if I extract here again and it gives me a copy, for some reason that works. So perfect. Uh, now we're, let's go back, let's real quick check this. What we want to bring over first is the Adafruit hid uh, library folder. HID it stands for human uh, interface device and this is things like our uh, keyboards our mice uh, so this is a library that's going to help us interact with that we're going to take this we're going to drag it over to the library folder on your pico and we're going to drop it there mm. let's try that one more time i don't think this doesn't seem to have worked there we go add a fruit 
We got the hid folder over there. Now we need a couple more files from that same uh, library folder. We need out of fruit debouncer and out of fruit ticks. So we're gonna go here uh, in our repos or in our in our uh, extracted folder, and we're gonna say uh, debouncer. We're gonna take that, drop it over, and then we're gonna say ticks. And we're going to drop that over as well. Uh, and then we have, I believe we need one more folder, which is the async IO folder from this, again, same library folder over here. Uh, and we're going to drag and drop that. So this is all really easy, really straightforward. Just drag and then drop it. Uh, now we have to take a couple more files and bring them over. If we go back to the root of our uh, repository that we have been working in, our GitHub repository, uh, Pico Ducky, you'll see that there is a boot.py file. So we want to take that, we want to drag and drop that. Oh, not here though. Let's try this again, that's not right. We want to go back to the root here. So we want to go to the root of our Pico. And we want to drag and drop that boot file here. So boot.py, perfect. Uh, we're also gonna go and we're gonna see this ducky in python.py file. Now what we wanna do is we actually want to, let's say we'll make a copy of it here. And we wanna rename that to uh, code.py. So we're gonna rename that and we're going to drag and drop code.py over here. We're going to copy over the code.py that's previously existing. So that's pretty straightforward. And now we're all set up. This is actually a live bad USB device. You can see we have no payload, but aside from that, we have a, a nice little bad USB device. So I have a payload I have already created payload.dd. So let's cat payload.dd out and we're going to expand this so we can get a better view. So this is what the, the actual script looks like. Uh, this, you know, rubber ducky is a very, very simple scripting language. Uh, everything after an REM is a comment. So you'll see a lot of times these are going to have pretty extensive comments at the top, a, a title, uh, the author, thanks to this person for writing. Uh, the script which I have modified, uh, and then it'll tell you what it does. Uh, you know what 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 operating system it targets, what version of Rubber Ducky it's using. Uh, I guess this is a prank, and uh, you know where where you'll you'll find these scripts. Just a, just a ton of different information. Sometimes it'll tell you how to actually arm these because the more complex and actually dangerous ones that you don't want to run against your own computer uh, have to be oftentimes armed before you can even run them. But let's run over just a little bit of script that I have here. Uh, so, you know, the, the thing that this device is just actually doing is being read as a keyboard. And then using Rubber Ducky script, we can tell it to type into our computer. Uh, so the the commands are, are mostly commands that uh, help us type things in. And you know I have a bunch of custom uh, custom shortcuts on my computer. So you know Mac OS payload's not going to work for my Linux computer or Windows payload's not going to work for my, my Linux computer because it's not going to be able to even open up a terminal. Uh, so I have to do some of my own stuff. So uh, let's just go over this. So GUI is a command that holds down your command key. So your window key, uh, your Apple command key, your super key in Linux. Uh, and then I'm personally having it choose enter and that's gonna open a terminal for me. Uh, delays are used a lot in DuckyScript because uh, what we have to do is actually wait for programs to open a lot of the time. So we're going to delay and wait a second 
so that uh, the computer has enough time to open a terminal uh, or in some cases open a web browser or whatever it is that you want to open before it starts typing again. Uh, string is the, the basic type command. So everything that comes after a string command is going to get typed in. So open and then uh, the, the URL of this, this video that we're going to open, this YouTube video. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit enter and just send that command. Really straightforward, uh, but you know, the, 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 the rub is that it's not always going to work properly because it, you know, the, the commands that you type in are gonna have to change from device to device depending on the operating system, depending on the user and the way that they've uh, changed or altered their install of their OS. So I am going to drag and drop uh, my little rubber ducky payload folder. We're going to take payload.dd. I'm just going to drag it, drop it over here. And now we can see that payload.dd has been replaced by my payload. And we're going to run it. I'm going to unplug my Pico Pi. We're going to Plug that back in. And there we go. That's a bad USB. Super easy, super quick to do. Uh, you know, that's a there's not a lot of an explanation of what we're actually doing there, but you can make yourself a bad USB device really quickly, really easily uh, by just playing around with one of these $5 devices, uh, this $5 Pico Pi microcontroller. Uh, and so, you know, get a little experience, play around, have some fun. Uh, I hope this has been educational for you. Uh, and yeah, thanks for hanging out. I'm Rod Linux. Take care.